right. Welcome to the Social for Brokers podcast. Today with me, I have Gemma Cuff of Gemstone Mortgages. You've probably seen her all over social. She's popping up everywhere at the minute. Now, Gemma's built an extremely successful business. We've got a team of 10 staff, and that's been done in just over five years. So it'll be great to hear, not about just the highs, but the lows on the journey as well, because from talking to Gemma for five, 10 minutes before now, she's really honest and she will give an insight into what it is like running a business so as i said you've probably seen Gemma all over social i've seen her a lot on linkedin and instagram but her business is very big on facebook and it's the way that Gemma's building the business looking after staff we're going to talk about the office and we're going to talk about social that really did catch my eye and i got in touch with her through through sam lapping at, at primus so we're going to be talking about social media but we're mainly going to be talking about the office and how that has an impact on not only staff but customers as well i won't give away too much so Gemma, thank you so much for coming on it's been a bit um a few months in the making this one <laughs> yeah, sorry <laughs> no no not at all so gemma has been that busy you hired what five staff in january and there was three in January um, and then one just recently this month. So four staff yeah. in the last eight months. Yeah. So yeah, what are you doing crazy. right then? What, why does everyone <laughs> want to come and work with you? Uh, well, I, I think I do treat the team well. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a massive believer um, after working in corporate environments for my whole career within the property industry um that you you, you tr the, the staff really they're, they're the hub of everything and if they're not happy then they're not going to be giving the clients a good journey and 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 everything will fall apart so i think it's really important just to yeah, start with your team definitely and, uh, and we'll go into that because you've had some trips abroad well you and the team have had trips abroad which is incredible you've got wellness groups we're going to get all into that but before we do give you a bit of an introduction Give us a background to you, your working life, how you started and how you got to where you are now. So I actually worked within um, residential sales within a state agency, first of all, training, um, training teams, first of all. Um, oh, wow. And then in 2011, I decided to be a, a trainee mortgage broker. Um, I started at Sequence. Um, so William H. Brown in Sudbury. Yep. Um, I worked there um, until I set Gemstone up in 2006. Uh, no, 2016. Where am I? 2016. Um, and then, yes, yeah, since then, started on my own um, in a little office above an estate agent. And then it just grew. Yeah, just grew from there. And um, it was just me and Emma. And we ended up getting our current premises just before lockdown in October 2020. Got the keys and then was told we can't let anyone oh, in the building. No, of course you wouldn't be allowed in, would you? No, but it gave us a lot of time to actually then get it ready and get it to what we wanted it to be, um, ready to launch. So, um, and then... Sorry, you had a little office above an estate. Eh? That must have been exciting, though, like kind of the... You know, I always see that photo that Jeff Bezos with the Amazon side. Of the Amazon. That, was it like that? Yeah. Just <laughs> like that. We had pigeons in the kitchen. There were <laughs> mice in the office. Uh, um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought I'd made it then. So it was fine at the time. <laughs> now, I mean, if you listen to this podcast and you sat down, go and take a look at the office at Gemstone because they're they're beautiful. They're, you've done so much to them. It, it's like, so some of the offices that I see, some people pitch them as like a living room and then other people pitch them as an office. You've got a mix of the two. I'm going to speak about what's in the office a bit further into the podcast. But if you're listening now, go and take a look at their offices. They're fab. First question I'll give you, why did you go it alone? You obviously worked within the residential sales, which I didn't realise you did. Why did you take that step? To be honest with you, I was thinking more about... Um being a female within the financial industry. Um, and I, I was doing very well at Sequence. Um, I was always in the top five in of mortgage brokers in the country. Um, and I'd actually just been given a promotion to an area sales manager as well. Um, and I was just thinking more and more about what happens when I actually want to start having a family. Um, within that corporate environment, there isn't um, really the growth for females to be able to do both roles I don't feel I think it's very difficult um, it's a very male orientated um, yeah. um, industry, industry. Um, and for me to have been able to maybe progress and continue being a sales manager one I'd stop being a broker which I love doing um, but also as well I, I, I don't think that that role would have been able to be done part-time if I wanted to then take time out right. so I just felt that I was 
I don't know, creating all of this money for a big corporate. Mm -hmm. um, I knew those clients were coming to do their mortgage with me, Gemma, the mortgage advisor, and not Gemma, William H. Brown in Sudbury. So I was like, if I go, they're surely going to like follow or I'm going to be able to create this same service on my own and then have the freedom to create something that would allow me to have a family in the future without feeling the pressures of going back to work and everything else and being governed by someone. So that, in all honesty, was the main reason initially. But Gemstone has then changed from what I, I never thought I would be net here where I am like doing with with the with the team now I thought it was always going to probably be just me see that's really interesting because a lot of the brokers that I speak to that are successful like yourself that have these big teams they never foresaw that happening that was it was just you've done such a good job with your say 20 clients that came to that tell 20 people that tell yeah. 20 people and then you want and what was interesting, I spoke to Gemma before we started talking, you were saying that you've trained every single member of staff up the way that you want them to be treated, isn't it? So although they're coming to you with the lead, you're passing it to your colleagues and they're getting exactly the same level of service. That seems really important to you. Absolutely. I think a, part, a bar one of my team, every single one of them have come in um, with no industry, um, oh, really? um, no, in, no industry um, previous experience. Um, and every single one of them has, apart from one, has done their CMAP with me. Um, so they've literally just learned the gemstone way. Oh, um, no oh, bad habits. Yes training yeah. them all up wow okay why, why did you do that rather than kind of hiring a ready-made broker um I, I it's think it's not that, right or wrong is no, it I'm just interesting to see what people say no not at all like I say I've got I've got I do have one member yeah. of the team that that is um that she's I mean she's got um the years of experience um through a corporate um which is great because then there's support there obviously with the rest of the team because of the knowledge and experience that she's got but by bringing somebody in I think from just like and learning from scratch with everything that from you they only know your way so yeah. if I if, if I mean I have a certain way with my clients that I'm professional mm -hmm. um but I'm not like I'm not I'm not too formal if that makes sense although we, we are kind of like professional you've got to be professional I mean you've got it's, yeah. it's financial services but it doesn't mean that you can't be personable Exactly. And when someone comes in here, I mean, no one ever wants to talk about getting the biggest debt of their life. But if they come in here and they and they feel comfortable, they have a beer, their kids are playing on the Nintendo Switch, you know, and and, and there's there's a relaxed environment that makes it actually fun. Um, and then the majority of them then, I mean, I've, I've actually made lifelong friends from my clients. That's, lovely. that's so, nice to hear. And, and that's then what I want my team to portray as well when they're actually then representing Gemstone. And you can see that from the team. And I want to talk about the team and the office shortly. But before we get on to that, the question I'd like to ask you, because it seems like you've got everything structured, what's more important to grow in a business? So say to somebody listening to this and it's we're doing this big event, well, big talk at the moment about women in the financial services industry. And there's a lack of and we really want to try and enhance and talk about it more so if there's a, a lady out there who is a mortgage broker and she's thinking about hiring staff would you say getting the processes sorted first or hiring staff is more important which one should they do first I thought what you mean is in the business process yes yeah I, I think you need to be sure of what your business process is because how are you going to get somebody that's going to effectively be representing you be representing your company um, unless you've got a structure that they're there that is there for them to follow mm -hmm. I think it does also really depend on the structure of your own company because every single one of my staff are all employed I don't have any self-employed brokers okay um so that's another reason why it's so yeah. important that they all have gemstone the gemstone ethos and, and the, uh, like you know treat people and act and have give people the experience the way that I expect them to be treated um when they're self-employed I, I mean obviously they're still representing but everyone has the same standard everyone has got the same kind of like expectations so and it, yeah it's, off the same hymn shit. and do they all come into the office or do you have flexi working do that everyone comes into the office yeah we are all in the office we have a morning meeting every day at half past eight where we talk through the diary we do on-the-spot training um and then yeah we we, we we all work in the office so our office is over two floors mm -hmm. so we've got our top floor which is kind of like a like trading floor where we all sit and there's a 
not it's not a mess but you know it's like happy mess yeah um, we know where everything is but it's yeah. a mess yeah. we all work um as in like all of our admin and everything is all over the place um and then we've got like a few little rooms upstairs which I'll tell you about when we talk about the office um and then downstairs is when we've got uh, where we've got our like reception area and that's where it's nice to meet and greet the clients and that's where we do our face to face appointments and i would say probably about 85% of our clients are, want to now come into the office and we see them all face to face so the office this is a this is a big thing we talked about the team talked about your background the office is it's something that i've definitely noticed and it became very apparent just after lockdown you did a lot of social pushing about your office rightly so because you <laughs> able to get let people no in. one had seen it <laughs> exactly, yeah come and look at the office so <laughs> give us a list just reel off some things that your office has that a normal mortgage brokerage wouldn't Okay, so the first thing I wanted was a kid's corner. I've always had, even in my little office above the estate agent, so I had a toy box with, and I'd go to the local charity shop and fill it up with toys just for them when they, they could, people could bring their kids in. So I really wanted a kid's corner. So we've got like a big mural on the wall of like a zoo kind of like safari thing. Yes. Um, there's like pegs where we've got, we've had our own gemstone colouring sheets made up so then they can colour them in and put them up on the wall um branding always brand did you only give them the blue pen as well <laughs> and then what other color color? Is there? <laughs> um and then we've got like a doll's house um we've got um a nintendo switch for the older kids oh, wow. um and then beers prosecco in the fridge tea and coffee obviously if it's not yeah. 12 o'clock <laughs> yeah, <it's not> <laughs> <like, laughs> um and then we've got what i call our locals corner so um during lockdown, especially, I, I know a lot of my friends um, owned businesses that they weren't actually able to trade. And I felt very grateful that we were able to trade. Um, like we actually yeah, boomed through probably, lockdown, yeah. even though we couldn't open the office. Um, so we did a lot of support in local um, companies, hairdressers, restaurants, barbers, beauticians. So we ran loads of competitions for them. We bought vouchers and then did competitions for people to win them so they could still earn money throughout lockdown mm -hmm. um so i wanted to continue our local kind of support so we've got our locals corner where i encourage people to drop in their business cards we put one up on the board and then we keep a stack of them in our like kind of like storage area yeah. that then if a client says you know um can you yeah, recommend a good floor up then yes of course we've got harry that does that and he says his yeah. card um so yes yeah, so we do that in the locals corner one thing we're doing to extend from that as well is I've created like a gemstone lifestyle card, which is due to be launched. I'm actually giving you top secret information. <laughs> it's all right. There's um, only a few people that listen to this. So, <laughs> um, so when so when a client does a mortgage with us, we charge them a one-off lifetime fee. So they become a gemstone lifetime client. And then every mortgage going forward is free of charge. But then what we're also going to do is hook up with other local businesses and say to them, if someone shows you that they're a gemstone lifetime client, will you give them 10% off? Oh, okay. So we've got a local coffee shop that's agreed. I've got a local gym. I've got a little kids like oh. clothing. They do designer clothing. Um, so they're going to do it. Um, I'm And then the other house related stuff as well. But I try, I want to try and make it something that once they're in the house and then they never, they don't, they've done the renovations or they've moved and they don't need packers to pack their house up and stuff. It's something that people can then use every single day to, you know. See, in my head, I automatically think, went to, oh, it'll be a removal company. There'll be a plumber and electrician. Do you know what I mean? A plasterer, a I gardener. Think so. I want people that, like, if they're in a five-year fix, but they go to a coffee shop every single day and they get their Gemstone Lifetime card out, they're looking at Gemstone every single day. So they're going to remember. Yeah, so that's... That's something that we're developing at the moment. And then I just put their link, like a little bio of them on our website with a link. So that's going to be the idea. Mm -hmm. um, we do, what else we do? We do a free coffee every day, you know, like what Waitrose does. I've not, no, I've, not, I've not seen, I've not been into Waitrose to get the free so coffee. If, if you have got a Waitrose card, you can go in and get a free coffee and a newspaper every day. Oh. So I have got gemstone branded takeaway coffee cups. <laughs> Wow. and our lifetime clients are invited to come in every single day if they are passing and they can have a free coffee a day but they have to have it in a gemstone branded coffee cup <laughs> and they have to come to the office and liaise with you and it's just that coming in and going oh, do you know what actually i do need to speak to you about my life cover i'm the gem can you book me in now and i'll come back next week when and i'll come and get my free coffee exactly this is where 
you've flipped it on the head completely with an actual physical location because if you went for if you we were talking two years ago people would be saying three years ago don't rent an office it's dead yeah. and it would have been like that before covid but what you've done is you've pulled mm. people back in by other means not just yeah. coming for your mortgage and the office looks fantastic from the front are you like based in a town center or you're slightly out yeah so we are uh, we, well you've got like the high street here and then we are kind of here just notice okay. I've even got my gemstone blue nails on look. <laughs> <laughs> just for the podcast they were done specially for uh... <laughs> um and then yeah we're at the bottom of the hill so people if you were to come to Colchester by train you have to walk past past our office to get into town so you get a it, lot of people coming past that aren't local um not walking past I wouldn't say I think we, we get a lot of people like commuting if they're working in town even though the high street is dying a little bit um but people do still go to town every day um and also we've got the college as well that is literally just up the road from us so um we, we get people walking past for the college and even though it's not maybe the kids that are getting the mortgages those kids have parents so yeah. you know it's yeah, yeah. it's and we've got like literally a row of restaurants as well and bars so when people are going out on a Friday or Saturday night, even though we're not open, if we're all over social media, they then go, oh, we've, we've seen that on Facebook, you know, and they're there. So it just thinks, um, like all links together. And that's what I'm going to talk about social shortly. You share a lot of local people's stuff. So they'll make that affiliation between you and the local coffee shop that mm -hmm. you get 10% off with your gemstone card. So it's just that drip feeding, isn't it? And without that office on a Friday night, they might not have taken more of your brand in. Yeah. It's, it's subconsciously it goes, it does go into people, definitely. Definitely. And and slowly but surely they'll get used to you and see you more on social. When it comes to the office, you've got all these amazing things. What is people's opinion when they come in? Are they shocked about it or do they, love they it. because they know that the kid can play on the switch? They love it. So I actually booked an appointment in this morning. Someone phoned up and I was like, oh, well, we just need to see if the mother-in-law can look after the kids when we come in because it's summer holidays. I yeah. said, how old are they? They've got a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. I was like, bring them in. We'll shove them in the kids' corner. The <laughs> older one can go on the switch. We've got Mario Kart, Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, and then we can, we can like, you know, colour us a picture or we've got <laughs> Teenage Mutant Huey with turtles, turtles down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing is, you'll find the parents down there, like, on the switch. Like, <laughs> you do need to come and speak about your mortgage, you do realise. Yeah, life. yeah, get out of the kids' corner. <laughs> So you look after your clients, you've got all of these different things, you've got the fridge, you've got the coffee, you've got the, I love the idea of the business corner, I think that's fantastic. It must mean the staff enjoy working there as well, and, and the staff are at the forefront of everything you talk about. What happy things do you put, yeah. happy <laughs> team as well. What things do you put in place for the team, and, and especially this, this gemstone wellness? So, um, well... I think there is so much on employers and just in general, like for, for you as like as, as people like self-care, self-love and everything and mental health is at the forefront of everything right now, I think. So just making sure that I go a little bit maybe above and beyond what I what I would normally think that would be normal is it was really important for me to do. Um, and so I created Gemstone Wellness. So I've pledged to do one thing every single month mm -hmm. that is kind of like outside of were anything work related effectively so we started it in um july yeah we we're in august aren't we? so we started it in july um so we rented a space at a beautiful vineyard in um near just outside of colchester um and we done a life coaching session um as a team where we spoke about the importance of teamwork um and how we can kind of be honest with each other um and to, to kind of remember that we all have lives outside of work and we need to be really uh, mindful that someone might be going through stuff if they don't talk about it. So we spoke about all ways that we can kind of be more respectful to each other. Mm -hmm. um, we then done a yoga class in the Vines. Oh, um, and then we done some wine tasting and had some lunch. Um, but I made sure we done it in office hours so they didn't have to give up their own personal time. So we physically closed the office at 12 and we didn't go back after the wine tasting yeah can you imagine <laughs> wine tasting or wine downing <laughs> like a fine line isn't there so that was july in august 
Um, I've told the team I haven't yet properly launched it, but um, we are going to be closing again for the afternoon. And I've invited everyone and their families and their kids, and we're all going to go to Colchester Zoo for the afternoon. Um, oh, well, you are it, creating that family within the office, aren't you? Yeah, that's. I mean, I think that especially like my team that have children, um, they work such long hours. Um, we all do as brokers like we all know how and we're working even more at the moment so I think by being able to show actually that I get that they have kids and I, I, it's important and obviously it's the last week of the summer holidays when we're doing it so just before they go back to school I thought we can all do it so we're going to go we're going to do an afternoon at the zoo I want to do a picnic and we're just gonna have a nice team environment like one of my um, one of my team said friends then she's my friend one of my yeah. team she doesn't have children but she's got a little sister who's, who's seven so I said she, she can come along, bring her along, absolutely. Um, oh, so okay. yeah. So you do a lot for the team, and there are going to be some mortgage brokers that are going to hate me for bringing this up because they're going to be like, I cannot do that. But you took your team away to on holiday, didn't you? Not yet. We're doing it in September. So basically, oh, so basically, I was looking at Christmas parties, and I was like, right, it'd be really nice to do something special this year. And there's this place in um, near Colchester called the Toll Booth. It's like a beautiful restaurant on the river. And I was like, oh, maybe we could hire that out, bring partners along as well. And it was like eight to ten grand to hire it for two nights. Like, and I was just like, that's ridiculous. So we could go abroad for that. And I thought <laughs> we could go abroad for that. <laughs> I had plenty of seed. So then I was just like, you know, yeah, why don't we all, instead of doing a massive Christmas party, why don't I do an annual overseas trip? And I'll, I'll be honest with you, that, that what we're doing, so we're doing, we're doing a five-star all-inclusive, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, back on the Monday. I've got a private boat trip booked. We've got um, like a lovely dinner on the coast. We've got um, like these Bed's kind of like a, oh God, I mean, I'm not, I'm not into kind of my beef and stuff, but you know, that kind of vibe. Oh, like by, the, by the pool and that kind of circuit. Yeah, like beds with cocktails and stuff for a day. But so, yeah, so I've, and, and it's literally cost a fraction of what that Christmas party was going to be costing. So that's, so I didn't see it as that, actually. I just saw it was a great thing. But even then, it's- I mean, obviously, enough. yeah, I do it to keep them happy. Yeah. <laughs> but he's thinking out of the box as to what, what a team wants like everybody's doing a christmas party so would they appreciate a, a holiday more we're going to get so many comments on this going uh my team have just asked me for holiday <laughs> <laughs> but take it it's cheaper than a, a christmas party so we've spoken about the staff we've spoken about the office and i'm aware we've, we've had a really good chat about that i wanted to speak to you about social media mm -hmm. you're quite consistent with the content that you pay out, but also with the branding as well how do you do that? What do you use? And how do you come up with the ideas? Because that's where people struggle now. So I use Canva. Um, Canva's, um, I, I mean, literally I can like knock a post up in about two, three minutes. Mm -hmm. So I've got all of my um, logos and everything saved on my app or on the computer. Right. I mean, it's so much easier to do on a computer than it is on an yeah, app. I, honestly, I used the app for about a year before someone said to me, why are you doing it on your app? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, massive screen there. Hmm. But everything's saved on there. So literally, so I just searched, let's say, I mean, I'm going to be recruiting soon. So I would type in on Canva, um, we are hiring. And then there's loads of examples of posts that come up. I nick one and then I change all the colours to gemstone colours, add my logo one, change the font to my font because we've got our own font that we use. Um, and then, yeah, it literally, it does not take that much time at all. No, and that's I wanted you to say that because that's coming. I speak about Canva all the time and how easy it is to use, but I spend 30 hours a week on it. You can jump on for five minutes and it is that easy, guys. Search the templates. There's hundreds of templates. Type in we are hiring, change your colours, done, download. Yeah. And and that does sound very straightforward to maybe somebody that's never used Canva, but you'll get it down for an hour to half an hour to 15 minutes. Practice. Yeah. It is practice, isn't it? Where do you get your ideas from posts for social? Um, I, I think a lot of it comes from like actually what we do day to day. So like if we've had um, like a, I don't know, like a really successful like life insurance or we've spoken something about critical illness cover or something and, and, and it's actually been really successful, that then drives us to, to you know, to, to drive that post. Um, or like, yeah, and just making sure it's like current. I, I personally also find that we get so much more engagement from a personal post. 
So I'm going to put a post up later on today because over the last two days, we've done our one-to-ones as a team. Um, and I make sure that we don't do our one-to-ones in the office. I make sure I take them all for breakfast or for lunch. Right. So okay. we go out of the office. We're away from all of the, the noise, the telephones going and everything else. And then everyone's relaxed and we can actually have a decent one-to-one and they get breakfast or lunch. So I was in bills yesterday from nine till two. <laughs> yeah. last one to one is just like yeah <laughs> just absolutely uh, i made sure that we took loads of photos and then so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a post to say like to the gemstone team had the one-to-one thank you bills for hosting i guarantee you that will get more engagement than if i put up what's a fixed rate mortgage exactly so, there's two things from that i'd like to bring to you a bring to people's attention because the first thing is personal posts will always get more um, interaction main reason being is because they like to see faces they know they recognize but what will happen is when Gemma then re re releases the post the day after about what is a fixed rate mortgage that post is much more likely to reach a bigger audience because you've had previous interaction so there's got to be that mix hasn't there and then the okay. second thing is you're uploading content that is local and you guys are very local as a business. So it's just enhancing your local brand, isn't it? Sorry to interrupt you, Gemma. Can no, we... no, you literally just took the words right out of your mouth. So that, it's all about <laughs> building that local brand, isn't it? And Absolutely. making sure that people know who you are. Mm -hmm. I've seen on your Facebook page and people can see that you share a lot of local businesses content. I saw there was a lady that did massages and you, yes. you, you get her into the office as obviously part of your wellness campaign. How important is that and how does it bring you leads or does it bring you leads? 100%. I think, well, I mean, we've got, for instance, there's a massage lady. We've got, um, there's a barber's up the road um, who, like, every time he shares anything, or we, I share that on our um, oh, okay. on our socials, for instance. And then I'll be like, you know, neighbour or something. Um, right. And then he then actually sends his clients. We have people walking in going, I've just had a haircut with Alfie. Um, he said, I need to come talk to you about my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more advice so, in the chair. Yeah, absolutely. But it just, I think, by us showing that support for the local businesses, um, especially when it comes to massages, restaurants, where people are actually talking to everyday people, yeah. You know, if they, if they just hear mortgage come up in, in, into conversation. Oh, you just need to go down and see Gemstone. And it's it's by supporting them, they support us. It's kind of like sharing is caring. That's it. And I'm glad you said that because it's not just you sharing a post on Facebook. There's a direct link of the lead. Like you can't say we post, we share one post and get a lead. You share the barber's post. He talks about somebody in an appointment three weeks later. Yeah. That'd be a good business idea, actually. You could train up hairdressers and barbers to become mortgage broke and give the advice where they're cutting the hair while they're cutting hair <laughs> oh my god they'd all have to be in separate rooms in both yeah. <laughs> your, your haircut would be like an hour but to be fair <laughs> if you're going for a cut and color that's what three hours probably yeah you could do a first second and protection appointment oh all absolutely yeah. <laughs> the one Get thing for I'm a thinking. bottle of prosecco during that time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's not for everything um the, the one thing we spoke about before you came on was how much time you actually spend on social interacting. You're not the kind of person that posts and runs, are you? You will sit there and interact. Where do you squeeze that into your day, Gemma? So I think it depends. If you talk about like creating content, a lot of the time I do that um, in, in my own time. Like we, 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 we work, we normally leave the office about, about six, half six. And then once I get home and I have my dinner, that's when I'm sitting there on my phone or the laptop or if, if we're not in all honesty when I'm in the bath um yeah, you know whenever you can almost yeah and I create it doesn't mean that I post it then but I create it ready um even like the notes section on my phone or like I write everything before I post it I don't write go straight oh, on to okay. Instagram so if I've got an idea I'll start writing it mm -hmm. and then I just copy and paste it on right so that's um, so it's just time. preparing yeah um but I mean, when it comes to the actual interaction, I mean, we do a lot on Facebook, like you, like, like you said, um, we do a lot through the um, Colchester community page where people always ask for recommendations. Um, so the interaction, like if someone recommends you, you need to respond to it then and there. So right. if someone says, oh, Gemstone Mortgages use them, I like it and I comment and I say, thank you. I re-tag us because then there's another tag that goes up at the top count um, yeah. and say, I'm happy to help and I put our contact details. Once you also acknowledge and say thank you to someone for recommending you, they're going to do it again. 
So the next time someone asks, you, they know they're going to get a little like thank you kind of, and it makes people want to help you if you're grateful for it. Like that um, local celebrity feel. I know some brokers that just use Facebook groups and people will recommend them that have never used them before. They just want to be known as that helpful person. Yeah. Community. Imagine yeah. When you think of it. <laughs> but that Facebook groups is a big area. Um, if anybody does want to have a chat about Facebook groups, let me know and I'll run through it. But they're a great way to enhance your, your reach of your social posts. So the majority probably- of them as well, sorry. Um, so you're not allowed to do advertisement in there, but there are certain groups, if you do manage to get in with the right one, that will allow like a Sunday promotional post. Right. Um, so just, yeah, that they're always good to get right. in with. Well. Maximise it, but also, like Gemma said, be careful of the rules because you don't want to get kicked out before you can okay. even post anything. Yet. Annoy anyone, yeah. no. <laughs> so we've covered your office, we've covered the staff, we've covered social media. Now I want to ask the strategy question, which I love asking. So we're <laughs> going to pretend that you've moved to the north of Scotland Scotland, you've got a laptop, a mobile phone, and an internet connection. What do you do to start generate new business? Am I allowed to go out or have I just got to sit on that laptop? No, you can do the laptop can go in the bin if you want. I've oh no, I would before. be lost without my laptop. <laughs> um, I, I would I would probably follow a very similar business plan to what I do now. And I would approach local um businesses and communities. Um, I would approach schools and ask to sponsor fates like by getting we, we do that here anyway so you can okay. have your board saying like you know summer fate um and i think it's all about creating a brand um and then putting it out there and i would also like within that with the social media especially i would then try to kind of show like what we do through that so then when someone goes to search it if it's not making any sense um then they will see um you know what we've actually done so reviews i think that's really important right, okay yep yeah, yeah brand them as well don't just share your review brand the review um and then I'm get that client. On that. i've got this big smile <laughs> on my face like you've got to do that sorry carry on but get the client to share your branded review that they wrote like that as well will help them push that out um but yeah i i would pick up the phone i would call estate agents okay, as much go back as to the old roots and yeah but i mean we we're assuming that i don't have a client base up there so i'm just like i'm going to get referrals and recommendations which is where like 90 percent of what we do comes from right now so i'd have to go back back to basic back to yeah. what you were saying when if people search you've got to exist there'd be no i think what Gemma's trying to say is there'd be no point sponsoring a summer fate with all your branding and your gemstone branding the beautiful colors for then somebody to facebook you and you've you uploaded it. once in the last three months absolutely you've, you've got to keep you've almost the the, the advertising is going to bring them in but then the facebook page you need to tell them why you should maybe look at a fixed rate at the minute instead of being on your svr do you know what i mean why share your you, knowledge share your knowledge exactly and become a thought leader but there's some great steps there i there's nobody that spoke about kind of sponsoring local events that's yeah, a, waffled great a bit there so <laughs> no no definitely and to be honest i send this question before we did the podcast because i can imagine you'd be sitting there going um just yeah and what see, would we do? i said to the team today i put it to the team i was like what would we do if we were 300 miles <laughs> but it's exactly what you've spoken about there it's getting integrated in the local community yes, doing everything that you're doing right now and i'd assume you'd try and set up an office exactly the same as you've done there yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've even I've even thought about the next step being: do we want to then recreate this like somewhere else as well? But okay. uh, yeah, I don't know. I I think that the thing is, it's about the, the brand being like being known locally. That's mm-hmm. what's made the office work. Yeah, yeah. People know people when they see your particular color, and I'm obviously big on this with branding. They know it's you. And I noticed that you changed your logo recently from the gemstone to just the gem. Yeah. That to me shows how strong your brand is that they don't need to know your name anymore. Yeah. Same as like your your red in your Coca Cola, your red in the Boutons, that type of thing. That's how strong it is. Thank you. So you <laughs> like Coca Cola and the Boutons. That's the. Brand. I was going to say the Boutons. <laughs> well done. <laughs> so, thank you so much for coming on. I really oh, do thank appreciate you for having me. It. So much value in that. And as a thank you, I'd like to donate ten pounds to a charity of your choice. Which charity would you like to go to? Um, we're actually fundraising at the moment anyway. To something called what we've created called the Big Jump. So it's for the Colchester Cancer Ward um, and the Firefighters Charity. It will be split between the two. So thank you very much. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Gemma. Anybody can connect with Gemma on 
on LinkedIn, you're very active. Instagram, go and have a look at the Facebook page. She's everywhere. And she's probably sat either having a dinner or a bath when you when they're on the <laughs> Gemma, thank you very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Thank okay. you.